Hey, Greg here, founder of Wrestling Divas, dedicated to highlighting the most beautiful and deadly entertainers in professional wrestling. My next special guest is a returning professional wrestler after spending more than eight years away from the business. She is best known for her time with the WWE under Florida Championship Wrestling. She is currently a model for the Home Shopping Network and a consultant as well. So I'd like to welcome the returning Chrissy Vane to the program. Hi, Chrissy. How are you doing? It's so great to have you. Hey, Craig. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Uh, that's It's fantastic because we've been friends for a long time, and it's great to have you back. And I'm so excited that you're back into wrestling. So I thank you for your time. And so uh, with you being here, it's been a while since we've done interviews. I hope that you're staying safe with the coronavirus going around and the same goes to the viewers yeah. here. Yeah, I Yeah, am. it's a bit, bit of a bummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah just it's trying cool. to. <laughs> I know it must be tough out there in the wrestling world and with modeling and everything with traveling being halted, but I, I do appreciate your time. I know it's kind of a crazy downer for us all, but let's see if we can uh, take some positives from, from everything that's been going on. So um, I'm really interested because we have known each other for a long time um, and Mm -hmm. I have followed your career since it started. Uh, What brought you back to wrestling? Because now you have a child, you have a career outside of wrestling, you're married um, to uh, fans know him as Connor from the Ascension in WWE. You have a lot more commitments. And to be honest, spending eight years away from the business, that's longer than most gals spend in the business. So walk right. me through the thought process of, I need to get back into this after spending so much time away. So it wasn't so much. Um, I'll I'll say that I have always loved wrestling since I was, you know, in my late teens is when somebody turned me on to professional wrestling, and I always loved it. I spent 11 years in the business um, prior to leaving the business. Um, I had just finished up shooting Lucha Libre USA when um, the opportunity with HSN came about, and um, I was offered a full-time position as an on-air model for both um, fashion and beauty. Well, that takes up so much time and it's such an insane schedule um, because HSN is live television 24 hours. So now so right. they were just HSN by themselves. Now they're branded with QBC, QBC entities. And um, I got the opportunity with them in 2011. I was just finishing up with Lucha Libre USA and um, I hadn't been training. My work wasn't like wrestling wise, like where I felt like it should be. I was really, really, really interested in um, sort of exploring a new world. And I did that full time from 2011 to 2017 when I became pregnant. And um, it was just a wonderful experience. And I didn't necessarily leave wrestling because I was like, oh, I'm done with wrestling. Like I can't you know, no more, but I had sort of, my interest had really, really peaked in another television um, industry. So with that taking up so much time, I didn't, I purposely didn't retire. I purposely didn't really say anything in the media. Um, I just sort of stepped away to kind of involve myself in something else. Well, then after I had my little one um, modeling and a crazy 24 hour schedule, can't really It doesn't really like set mom life. And um, I really felt a calling because you're, we do come from a, we have, this is a wrestling family. Like even when I'm out of the business, I'm still involved because my husband is, you know, one of those like life guys. He loves wrestling. Like he will be forever involved. So even if I'm out of the business, I will still always be a little bit, you know, involved uh, through my family. So after we had Elijah, I just was like, it had always sort of been in the back of my mind, but I didn't have time. I was way, way, way too busy with HSN, and it took entirely too much of my time to do any type of training, anything like that. Um, And I didn't want to be crappy when I, you know, when and if I ever took a show again. 
So um, right. after I had him, my schedule had slowed down a lot. And I also really, you know, with the whole WWE thing, like I really didn't get to leave a mark or a legacy the way that I wanted to. I was really, really, really talented. I think I have a lot to offer to the business. So that's when I started hearing um, little birds would tell me that wow out in California was potentially interested in me. And so right. keep in mind, I've been out of the business eight years and I'm like, okay. I'm like, that sounds really fun. I've very much become a woman's empowerment, like go women, um, love the female movement. And I thought, now that's something I can really get behind. Like, that's something that's really cool. So I kind of talked to my husband. I think Elijah, my little one, was only like a little over a year at this point. And um, we talked about it, and he said, well, listen, my husband said, if if you're going to do it, you got to do it now. And he's like, and we just need to go to the school and start training. So we went to the school in Largo, and um, I, I was nervous because I hadn't been in the ring in eight years. And I'll never forget right. um, the guy training, Frankie Chiazzo, looked at me and said, how long have you been out of the ring? And I said, I think it's been about eight years, if I remember correctly. He goes, Chrissy Vane, he goes, when you are really, really, really good at something, he goes, you should always do it. He was like, you haven't skipped a beat. And I wow. trained were about, I want to say, six months before I got the call from WOW. You know, I was sending them. I knew that they were kind of interested, so I was sending them promos. I was sending them training videos, so they knew I was working really, really hard. And um, I think about six weeks before I went to California in September to tape is when they called me and said that they were hiring me. And... um, and so that was, you know, that six weeks, like I went double hard and made sure I was like ready, ready. And um, we went out to California. I was there for eight days. We taped uh, the entire season three and, um, and just can't wait for it to air because it was one of the most amazing weeks of my entire life. And I was welcomed back by the girls with open arms. And it was just like a huge reunion. I got to... Um, be in the hotel room with my best friend Amber for an entire week and goof off and it was really really hard for me to be away from my family I will say that I cried every we had really really long work days I would be the first one in the makeup chair at like 10 a.m and um and then I didn't get back to the hotel room till midnight almost every single night because we had super duper long tape days um so I would get back to the hotel room and I would cry every night and I would I was just so thankful to have Amber there with me because she would talk to me and hold my hand and, you know, the whole thing. And, and, you know, it was, it was a week and it was awesome. And I made it through and I was very happy to get back home to my family, but it was so amazing to like go out there and live my dream and, and the part of like a huge, like women's empowerment um, company like that. Yeah, absolutely. And there's definitely a big push for women. I actually went to one of their first shows back in 2013, and I actually had pitched Amber to David McLean. So I'm happy that you guys oh. are having your reunion. Yeah, yeah. So we actually met yeah. uh, in person for the first time back like five, six years ago. So she was very Wait, grateful to be there. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was in California. I was in actually, I flew to um, Las Vegas oh, you flew to for my Vegas. 21st. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I flew there and I had pitched uh, Amber O'Neill and Barbie Hayden and a couple of them and they yeah. actually managed to get on the show. So I was thrilled to see yeah. them and them there. And I'm I'm thrilled to see you there too because I've always been a fan of your work. Um, well, so you. fans can look forward to seeing that whenever this coronavirus <laughs> gets calmed yeah. down and, and we, we air the next season. Um, but really, uh, you didn't skip a beat during training. So, so take me to the mentality that you had on your first day back, because I'm a lot of wrestling training. It, it's like once it's in your blood and once you get it, it, a lot of it's riding, like riding a bike. You never forget it, no matter how old you get, no matter how many years it's been. Um, but then some of it, like the pain aspect is I'm sure a little bit hard to adjust to, um, you know, after so much time away. So what was your mentality when 
you know, you had to go in for all the cardio and all the work there. Yeah, I think it took me about three weeks. So I've stayed super duper active this entire time, except for when I was pregnant. I gained a lot of weight when I was pregnant, but I pretty much maintained my size, maintained, um, you know, a certain level of fitness, certainly not like it was in deep self wrestling, but I've maintained a certain level mm. of fitness. So I think it was about three weeks before I kind of um, adjusted back and it was like, oh, yeah, my body remembers this. Um, and yeah, honestly, it wasn't that I, I'm going to be honest with you. It wasn't that bad, uh, luckily because it could have been really, really, really bad, but it wasn't. Um, now I'm not as strong as I used to be like where I used to could like press like Chantel and stuff over my head. I don't think I could do that nowadays cause I'm built a little different. I'm a little longer. I'm a little leaner. Um, Right. That has a lot to do with my diet. I'm, I don't eat a lot of meat anymore. I'm mostly, I'm like 95% vegetarian. So I'm a little more slender than I was in like the heyday of my wrestling. Um, right. But I'm still an athlete, like with those genes. So it wasn't, you know, it, honestly, it wasn't that bad, believe it or not. Um, three, four weeks and I sort of went back to, um, you know, went back to normal for the most part. There's still, there was some cardio things and things like that that took a little longer. Um, but I think that that was mostly like an asthma breathing thing that takes a little, as you know, like takes a little longer to adjust as far as all that goes. Right. But I, did, I honestly, it was a fairly easy transition. Oh, that's, you know, that's great because it's a lot of the times with training, you can get discouraged when you don't get something and, and you're, you know, spending so much time away. It's, it's, a, it's a different type of lifestyle. And of course, you know, this being in ring shape is different than being in gym shape. So it does take a bit yeah, of adjustment 100%. for even a, a good athlete. Um, but, you know, getting back into this, uh, after so much time away, um, a lot of people remember you from Deep South and then eventually Florida Championship Wrestling, which eventually uh-huh. came became NXT. So I, I remember seeing this on TV and being so excited. You make your debut. From what I understand, it was just kind of a last-minute thing, um, and you attacked Tori Wilson. Now, what really interested me about this moment is that a, you, the both of you looked really similar, so I kind of got why your character was angry, even though you really didn't say anything. So I kind of know what direction they were going. And what was really telling about this is that Tori at the time, because this was around 2007-ish, if I'm not mistaken, she was still uh-huh. there and the top diva or wrestler there um, next to probably uh-huh. like Trish. So right. my sense of that was you were going to kind of take the mantle from her because she was out of the company with injuries and she left about a year later. Um, you have spoken about kind of what you were going through at that time and that wrestling was taking up so much of your life. And a lot of wrestlers speak to this where it may become so enamored with it that it becomes toxic. Um, so for the record, yeah. And of course, I know some of this might be personal too. What happened at that moment when you said, I, I can't do this right now? It's- so back then, this was before the days of social media. This was before the days of the internet. This was before the days of companies like that having HR and you know somebody that you go to. Um, I just was having a lot of personal problems within myself. I had a lot of personal demons. I was raised in a very small town with not, you know, blue collar family. Like I didn't come from a family that worked for billion dollar companies. I was not trained in what happens when you get to that level of success and sort of the sharks in the ocean and, um, and, learning to be tough in order to get past all that. Um, Right. So I started self-medicating. I was at Deep, uh, was I at Deep South when I started taking Xanax? Um, I think I was at Deep South when I started taking Xanax because I I was actually prescribed it. Um, So I thought, well, this is a prescription. I'm not, you know, this is the doctor says that I need this and, you know, whatever. So I'm going to take it. Uh, I have even, you know, over the past 
12 years or so, like, have really, really struggled with um, anxiety. It's been very, very much controlled for about the last 10 years. Occasionally, I'll have a bout with it, but um, just really, really struggling with anxiety. Um, Every little word that anybody said to me uh, sort of just put me in, like, the depths of, like, destruction because I took everything right. very, very personally. Wrestling's a tough You're business. You're constantly being they evaluated like, by them, too. Yeah, they're not telling you how good you are. Like, now I can look back and be like, holy shit, I was really, really good, and they were about to hand me the world. But at the time, nobody was telling me that. Um, I've right. since heard rumors, like, my friend Melissa Coates had told me that somebody told her that I was supposed to be, like, the next big thing. No one ever told me these things. I always just thought right. that I was horrible. Um, I was not good enough. I was too fat. I was too this. I was too, I had a, you know, weird nose. Like, I, and no, no office or nobody ever told me that. I was reading, like, things, like, online um, from, like, the fans. Right. Um, we, they were very particular about our weight back then. Like that, I was I was distinctly told if I didn't stay at one thirty five that I would not go to television. That they would let me go. Right. Um, right. But again, you know, it's a it, uh, again back then everybody looked like Barbies. Um, the business has changed now. Um, even the few shows that I've done, I'm like, wow. I'm like, it is really really different now. Like there is more acceptance. Um, people can't get away with the shit that they used to because of social media. Um, the office is like, there's a, there's a particular way that things are done. It's more like HR, like a professional, you know, it's not so carny anymore. It was like definitely a little more carny when I was there, like more of a boy's world. And, um, but again, I did, I had like, the things that were said to me were said to everyone. It wasn't like anybody was like just calling out, you know, right. Kristen. It wasn't like that. Um, so I just was not, and this goes back to my childhood and this is like how I'm like raising my kid. Like he hears from me every day, like you can conquer the world and you will conquer the world. And I'm going to teach him everything he needs to know to go to like, it should he choose to go into like high levels of success and not crumble like I did. When I left WWE, right. I sort of had had a really, really rough loop on um, the house shows. I had just, it, it was just, everybody was really, really mean to me. And I didn't know why they were being really mean to me. And again, it's like a hazing thing back then that they don't do now. And I was the first one from my class to go up, you know, the twins were still down in developmental, who I was really, really close friends with. Marie, still down in developmental, really, really close friends with. I didn't have anybody. I went up into the shark tank, like, by right. myself. And we right, didn't have and so they, they must have got the impression that, of buddy. entitlement. Right. What's that? Right. So I, I can imagine that they, they might have gotten an impression of entitlement, like who is she trying to take this top spot away from somebody who's been there so for so I'll long or something exactly like that. It was. it was jealousy. Because right. I was like a little, jabr- like I was like a little jabroni girl coming up from developmental. Like I wasn't dating anyone important. I wasn't sleeping with anyone important. I didn't have any like inappropriate re- relationships with the office. Um, it was literally like, who is this little jabroni girl coming up in here, getting ready to take a top spot? Did I know that at the time? No, I just thought people didn't like me, and I wasn't used to that. I was like, everybody likes me. I'm really cool. Like, what? Like, what's happening here? So it was really, really, really hurtful. But looking back and being older and being wiser and having lived quite a life since then, um, now I know what it was. But back then, I was just a kid. Right. I had no idea. I was a baby. I'd never never even barely been out of North Carolina or the East coast. So um, it was just a lot of like things piled up against me and stacked up against me. And then it was a lot of like training that I hadn't done on my own mind. The Bellas introduced me to personal development. They uh, gave me their copy of the secret as I was breaking down, like not knowing what to do. And they're begging me to like pull it together. They gave me the copy of the secret. I just wasn't, 
it didn't it I wasn't ready for it yet. It was a year or two later right. before another person that I met after I was sort of only doing indies like sort of led me down the spiritual path and led me down the path of personal development. And now I have become a master at that because never again was I going to destroy uh, something like I did at that very moment as a child, as a kid. So you know, right. it's been a hard road since then. So when you have karma left like that, like you find out much later that you are destined for like these huge things and like you were just too much of a kid, to, you didn't have the life skills to like cope, like that sits on your heart heavy. Right. Right. So and that so is I, kind of why it always so called to me. It's so called to me. Even though I was very successful at HSN, I was one of the top girls there for years. I was always on television. Wrestling always so right. called to me, called to me. It was like, come back and finish it. Like, come back and, like, you were so good. Like, leave your mark. Um, but do it the right way this time. And I feel like that right. um, that I, I, I'm going to. We had a couple of – I had some things planned for April and – um you know, we, I, we, I'm doing wow and all that. So like I, now I have no doubt in my mind, I could handle anything that comes at me. But as a kid, fresh off, you know, fresh out of North Carolina, who had never had anything, any business training whatsoever, because it is a business and you have to look at it as a business. Um, you know, now I could tackle anything, but back then I just wasn't seasoned. I wasn't seasoned enough. I didn't have the training and personal development like I have now. Like now I could handle anything. I have no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. And I love your mentality and your positivity as well. And, and, you know, it's a, it's a learning process and it's not all going to be perfect, but it really seems like you're in a good place to contribute um, you know, so with, with the couple of minutes we have left, I'm really interested to know your time away from wrestling. They always say that once you enter the business, you never leave it. And you often, because you have so much of your life dedicated to it, whenever you try to do something else, you make comparisons to wrestling or, um, you know, you just can't get your mind off of it. Now that you're back, after spending so much time away, what is that footprint that you would like to leave in this phase of your career? Um, what what was left unfinished that you would like to kind of leave your signature on, so to say? So I don't really have any attachments as to how things go this time. That was a huge, huge mistake that I made um, in my earlier days was having like attachment to how things worked out. And if we want to have stress in our life, if we want to cause anxiety, if we want to, you know, not be a peaceful person, attach yourself to the outcome of something because that is when you will cause yourself all sorts of stress. So this time I made a promise to myself and a promise to my family that I wouldn't attach to how things worked out for me. Um, So when we started the training, I said, you know what, even if one of the bigger companies never calls, even if they, you know, never show any interest in me and this was just a rumor I heard, but it's not true, I'll just still go do the indies and just perform in, you know, school gymnasiums and, you know, um, armories and whatever comes about. And I'll just have fun doing the business that I love. Now, luckily, I did have one of the big companies call, um, and who knows, you know, what lies ahead. But I learned a very, very long time of me, because I feel like that was a huge pitfall pitfall of my WWE career, is that I was attached to the outcome, attached to a timeline of how things should happen. I thought I should, if I wasn't on television by the time I was 25, and like, killing it that I was like done I was done that is so much pressure on yourself so now I'm just like I'm just like you know what it is it is how it is I still look amazing I still look like a million bucks and if there's somebody out there who sees value in what I do and thinks that I can offer something really good to their program so be it Otherwise, I'm just going to do it for fun and to be involved in the business that I love and to have fun with my family. So I don't have, I have zero expectations this go around. And I mean that with everything that I have. Would I love to be on a big stage somewhere? Absolutely. Every performer wants that opportunity. 
but am I going to push and am I going to try to knock down doors that cause myself anxiety and stress and, you know, whatever it may be, I won't do it because what's yours can't be taken. Your path will always circle back around for you. It's not a straight line. It's a circle. Yeah, absolutely. And everything comes full circle. And I, I still think you're, you know, you're destined to do great things. And as a fan, I'm really hoping for a good team bondage reunion. That was one of my favorite yeah, tag teams growing up. So looking forward, looking forward to that. And I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. When you re- returned, I was like team bondage reunion. That's exactly where my mind <laughs> went back. And now that you're back with, wow, I'm really hoping that they, they have something in the wings for you and Amber. I'm just, I, I can't, I can't stop my excitement with it. So I'm really excited to see what you do there. And th- there are other companies out there like AEW and MLW and everything. So I think that this is a good time to get back into things um so that people know because i don't think that you've done a lot of audio interviews since your return i know that you've done a couple of shows you wrestled chris statlander um and Uh then uh, a couple of other things that you've been able to do how can people contact you now that you're putting your footprint back out there because it's, it's tough to get started too from a promotional standpoint after spending so much time away you know it's it's yeah harder to reignite the flame yeah, then then it is to keep it going. Yeah, so like, how how, how are you staying booking? connected? I'm like, how does one get bookings nowadays? Like, I don't even know how you do that. <laughs> um, so I was like, well, maybe when WOW comes on TV, like then maybe people will come. I don't know. I don't know how that works <laughs> nowadays. So um, yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's like one of those things. I'm like, well, I'll meet the right people. I'll, you know, the right people will come to pass. So I am most active on my Instagram, which is at magical, M A G I C A L dot Chrissy, K R I S S Y. It's a combination of all my loves, which is spirituality, wrestling, modeling, family. Um, it's just sort of a meld of everything. But um, I can be contacted through my Instagram or I have the same email that I've had for like the last, like, I don't know, my entire adult life. It's Chrissy Bain at <laughs> yahoo.com. So um, I've never changed it because I think that there's um, numerologically wise, Chrissy Bain is a very powerful um, number or name numerology, numerologically wise. So I have never changed that purposely because I think that it's a really, it's a really good um, power number in career. So um, I never changed right. it. So everyone can reach me at Chrissy Vane at Yahoo or my Instagram, magical.chrissy. Oh, well, I am so excited that you're back. Like I, we met each other years ago and I was like, I hope she comes yeah. back one day. And I actually talked to you about it. I was like, you're not leaving, right? <laughs> so it's great to see you back. And I do appreciate your time and your wisdom as well. It really seems like y- you have made great strides in, in being, you know, in that place where you need to be. And, and there are a lot of opportunities out there. We have AEW, we have Impact. Um, MLW, WOW, which you're already a part of. So I'm excited to see yeah, where this chapter of your career ends up. And so um, I'd really like to thank you for your time with everything. And I do wish you all the best of luck in everything that you do, not just wrestling, but of course, motherhood is, is a new adventure and, you know, everything that yeah. you do in modeling as well. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Greg. I hope you're doing good. And I hope to see you at one of these shows coming up soon. Oh, if Team Blonde is there, I'm going to be there. I don't care if I have to walk. I will be there. So we'll see each other at some point. (laughs) Okay, we'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks to everyone else for tuning in. Be sure to check out Wrestling Divas. That's wrestling-divas.webs.com. For more exclusive updates and follow the website on Twitter at Wrestling Divas, again, with a Z for all the latest updates.